Many of us fell in love with stories when we were young. They started off once upon a time, and after a harrowing adventure, they ended with, and they lived happily ever after. We've studied stories from around the world, and the beginnings and endings are similar. The content of the stories are different, but their structures are alike. Consider a classic African tale from Zanzibar called The Hare and the Lion. The story begins, One day, Sungora, the hare, roaming through the forest in search of food, glanced up through the boughs of a very large calabash tree and saw that a great hole in the upper part of the trunk was inhabited by bees. Here, the author is setting the stage for the story by introducing the characters, the setting, and other background information. Look at the words that help to set the stage. Day, Sungora, Hare, Roaming, Forest, Search, Food. But look at what we don't see. An entire world of small, common, and almost invisible words connecting these content words. Many of these hidden words are articles, such as a, an, and the, and prepositions, such as through, of, in. In fact, articles and prepositions are required at the beginning of a story for the stage to be set. Now, let's jump to the last sentence of the story. But it was of no use. Sungora completely tired out old Simba, who saying, that rascal has beaten me, I don't want to have anything more to do with him, returned to his home under the great calabash tree. Compared to the beginning, there are very few articles and prepositions. Instead, there is a high rate of other short common words like pronouns, such as it, me, him, auxiliary verbs, such as was, has, is, and a mix of other very short words like negations and conjunctions. What this tells us is that different parts of the stories are inhabited by different categories of words, especially the short common connector words, often called function words. By looking at just the function words, it is possible to identify the underlying structure of stories, no matter their length or content. Welcome to the Arc of Narrative. Since Aristotle, scholars have argued that stories share a basic structure. Authors need to set the stage at the beginning, have some kind of climax in the middle, and then tie everything together at the end. The problem is no one can agree on how to identify or measure these dimensions. We wondered if we could see this structure by looking at those small hidden function words instead of paying attention to the themes of stories. To do this, we computer analyze thousands of stories, ranging from epic novels and short stories to off-the-cuff stories created by everyday people to identify staging, plot progression, and cognitive tension. Think back to the beginning of The Hare and the Lion. To set the stage, articles and prepositions are needed to provide information about people, places, and things. We expected that articles and prepositions would be used at the highest rates at the beginning of stories and would drop as the story unfolded. Our results found just this. If you look more closely, you can see that this narrative trend holds across novels, short stories, and amateur stories. Narrative structure then is not tied to content, length, or formality, but it is something deeper, more universal. Once the stage is set, the story can begin. Words that reflect movement and change over time should increase. We use a combination of words, but two of the main players are auxiliary verbs and pronouns, which by their very nature are action-oriented and social. We assume that over the course of the story, markers of plot progression would increase. And that's what we found across all story genres. Finally, there's the story's climax. Characters often confront challenges and conflict towards the middle of the story. A group of words called cognitive tension words, such as think, realize, or because, reveal when people are trying to make sense of their world. We argued that cognitive tension words would start low in the story, peak around the middle, and then fall as the story ended. And again, our computer analyses found just that. All three types of stories show peaks in their use of cognitive tension words in the middle of the story. That there is a measurable and visible underlying structure to stories raises dozens of questions. For example, do good stories have a different structure from bad ones? Do other works such as nonfiction show the same narrative patterns? To learn more, check out our paper along with the supplemental information.
If you'd like to explore the narrativity of text on your own, we've developed a website where you can look at the arcs of hundreds of published books and movie scripts with the option of uploading your own text samples. We are at the threshold of a new world that can help us understand the very nature of language, stories, and communication. Contact us if you have any questions.